Hey everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and boy do I have a lot of stuff to show you today. Many of you may remember I did this video up here in the corner. You can click on that. Um, it's 16 things this crochet or must have to crochet. Well, I got an overwhelming response from you all and I thank you so much for that. And this video has been born from that and this is an additional 20 things that you said I needed to add to my list and you were right. So um, we may need to get a larger crochet bag for all these things, but obviously some of these things I'm gonna show you in this video are not portable, but things that you may want to invest to have available in your home. Well, let's go ahead and start. And just to let you know, the links to many of these things will be in the video description below. And these things are not, um, nobody is paying me to say what I'm saying. These are things that I have personal experience with. In fact, I purchased a few of these things from Amazon just to look at them to see if I even like them or would use them before I tell you about them, which is why this video has been a few weeks delayed. Number one, you all mentioned a ball winder. Now, some of you may have never seen such a thing like this. If you only use skeins from, let's say, a big box store, you probably, or balls of yarn that are already wound, you probably won't need one of these. This attaches firmly to the table, and this is um, the Stanwood um, large ball winder, which I highly recommend. I have used this for a number of years, and so far it has never let me down. Very, very uh, super duty. Um, I think stronger than some of the cheaper ones on the market. You can get lesser expensive ones for sure, but just I know that some of them tend to break. And this is for winding yarn like this, that when it comes in hanks like this, okay, it, it'll take a 20 minute winding job down to maybe two, assuming that the, you know, the yarn is not all tangly and everything. So number two on our list is a swift. Now this is an umbrella style swift. I'll go ahead and show you. This also connects to a table. So you need to have a lip off of a table to connect it to. And then this opens up according to the, um, you know, the size of the yarn. And then you can fasten it to any size. And then this will spin as the yarn winds onto the large ball winder. Now, again, this is the umbrella type. There is another type that I'm gonna show you right here that I got from the Oregon Woodworker. This is while I was traveling out in uh, yarn at the Yarn Fest Festival this past year. And to be honest with you, I really, really love the one that I got from the Oregon Woodworker. Again, links are in the video description below. Um, I really like the one that I got from the woodworker, that style much better because you don't have the post in the middle so that if you have yarn that you need to detangle, it's much easier to deal with than when you have that post in the middle with the umbrella. So just something to consider if you're in the market and you've never gotten into your Swifts and the ball winder. All right, let's go on to number three. Ah. Many, 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 many of you suggested a stitch counter on a lanyard. Or not so much a stitch counter, but a row counter. I guess you could count stitches. You can count anything on this. And the way this works, this is not electronic. You just have to, let me go ahead and show you up close. You can see the counter. There we go. And you push this. And it's very difficult to clear, okay? So you just do this at the end of each row if you need, you know, something like that. And in order to clear it, you have to, you don't push it or anything. You have to actually physically turn this thing so it won't get accidentally cleared like some of the electronic ones will. This will never need battery. And they come in sets of two very cheaply. And if you're like me and you lose crochet hooks and little things all the time, two is not a bad thing. And you can always hang it up where you keep, let's say the keys to your car, you know, hanging in your kitchen wall like we do. So you always know where your counter is. And then you can stick one in your bag. So if you don't have one, you can always grab one from the other place. And I do wanna thank um, Linda S for sending in that suggestion as well as many, many others. So here is another suggestion. Number four is a magnifier. Ooh. Okay, 
And what's really cool about this magnifier, it's, it's very inexpensive, and not only can you use it like this, but you can actually pull the stand up. There you go. It is a nice firm stand. And you can look at it on the tabletop, but it gets better. There are one, two light settings as well, so it can illuminate and magnify what you're trying to look at. And I believe this was around $15, but you can just check the video link below. There are many different variations on a magnifier with the light. Another very important thing to have available, a nail file. How often have you been out crocheting somewhere and then you get a little snag on your nail and you need to do something with that so it doesn't snag your yarn? And to go along with that, let's look at number six. This is a nail clipper. It's a very cute nail clipper. I like the fact that it's big like this because it keeps me from losing the small essential part. So these are fantastic. And also if you don't have a pair of scissors handy, you can cut your yarn very cleanly with your nail clipper. Done that so many times. Okay, number seven on our list suggested by you, our viewers, is a gauge finder. This one happens to be very old. Um, it was given to me and you can see the space right here can help you find how many stitches are in a two inch area each way. Now I personally prefer just to use a straight up measuring tape as I mentioned in the very first video, but some people prefer something like this. If I was going to purchase something like this, I would definitely look for some that has a wider opening than a two inch, maybe at least minimally a four inch. I think that would just serve me better, which is probably why I don't use this one as often as I, as I probably could. But I do prefer to use a tape measure, which you can also substitute for number seven. All right, number eight. Ah, this is a little bit of family history here. A pin cushion, and you can see how messy it is, and that's a good sign. That means I use my pin cushion and um, you know, keep lots of, of sharp, ready to use pins. And I like to use pins with a very big head on them because the smaller ones do tend to get lost. These are also helpful too to have on hand when you're opening new packages, especially men's shirts, men's fitted shirts. And you know there'll be at least 20 pins in those shirts. It's just a convenient place to put those pins until you can do something else with them. But this is just a very special um, old pin cushion and you could probably even make one of those with your crocheting skills. Okay, somebody submitted the idea, uh, several of you did, about a stuff holder that fits over the arm of a chair. I don't have one of those to show you because I, I don't own one of those, um, but I, I, I'm gonna suggest um, two other suggestions. Um, in place of that, if you want to make a stuff holder where you can stuff like pockets of, you know, things in the pockets, that's absolutely fine. Personally, when I stuff things in bags and purses, I tend to forget what's in the bag in the purse. I like to have things out so that I can see them. So in lieu of that, my personal take on that, I use, um, like a TV tray. It's a simple folding, um, small TV tray that traditionally people would eat TV dinners on in front of the TV. Well, I put that beside the chair where I usually sit when I crochet and craft because that way I set the things that I need so they're readily available. I don't have to dig into a pocket to get it. And yes, I know it looks a little cluttery, but my family loves me and they put up with it. And it just makes it so much easier if I can have visual contact with what I need rather than having to dig into something for it, especially if I have something sharp in those places. So um, that would be number nine. Okay, for number 10, it was suggested laundry baskets or storage bins. I have so many of these in my house. I use them for just about everything from extra yarn and I have it sorted according to the type of yarn to completed projects and I have them sorted out. But these are really, really wonderful, you know, to store your completed 
uh, crocheted throws and um, sweaters that you're not going to use, let's say, you know, during the warmer seasons of the year. When you store them away, make sure you check out the video. I'll put it right up in um, on, on the end screen and in the video description below. I do have a video on how to safely store your crochet creations. So you want to keep that in mind as you store them away. Number 11 is very similar in being a storage item and these are called organza bags and let me show you i oftentimes will store different yarns in each bag separately and um, this is very helpful these are very very inexpensive you can buy them in various sizes online i'll put a, a link again in the video description below and you just pull pull these little um strings and, and there you go, it closes. They're very easy to open back up in the same way. And you know, these also can make really fun gift bags too. You can just tie little ribbons around them. There's a, so much you can do with these. But again, I love storing them because if I put quite a number of projects in my yarn basket, this is the thing I mentioned on the other video with the 16 things, um, it's really easy for these different yarns to get tangled. Um, and I, that's the last thing that I want is one project's yarn to get tangled into another project's yarn. And that's, that's just not a good, good thought to even think about it happening. And so by putting them each project in an organza bag, um, or even just, you know, each type of yarn, like I said, it keeps the yarn from getting all entangled and messed up. So definitely check in to some of those to help preserve your work. All right, number 12 was sent in by Tracy H. Thank you so much, Tracy, for this idea. And she suggested putting a twin size bed sheet, just the top cover, of course, because the other ones are way too hard to fold, right? Um, a top sheet from a twin size bed and fold it neatly and clean and put it in inside a Ziploc bag and keep it in your craft bag for when you need a clean surface. For example, if you are crocheting in a place, whether it be home or somewhere else, and you're not particularly thrilled with maybe where you're going to bring this out, maybe there are maybe remnants of like dog hair or cat hair in the area, and you just wanna make sure that your project does not pick up that, that hair or the dander or what have you. Um, and so you can spread this out on, on your lap and then put your project on top of that, and you can even, um, you know, it, it just helps to protect your project and your yarn from picking up, you know, any loose dirt or, um, again, animal hair that you just don't want to be included in your project. So again, Tracy, thank you for sending in this wonderful idea. All right. Number 13, I, I actually ordered one of these special. This is a neck light. I, I've never owned anything like this. And um, I, I thought, well, let's just go ahead and see. But once I purchased this, I thought, oh my goodness, this is a game changer. So this is a light that fits around your neck. And if, let's say you're watching a movie with your family and they like to keep the lights really dim, you can turn a little light on here. You can use two or you can use one. And it has different settings, so you can make them even brighter or dim. Okay, it gets even better than that. I'm gonna turn them both on. It also has different colors. Okay, and I really like, I like, I like kind of the, the yellow light myself. It's just less harsh. And you can sit and you can move these around however you want. Be careful not to point them in people's eyes like I just did on the camera, but, um, but you can, have your project that you're working on illuminated pointing down so it's not disturbing anybody else. Or maybe if you're on a, a subway, um, you are maybe even on an airplane flight or something, this is definitely going in my travel bag from here on. So um, great, great, great idea. Another thing I suggested to my husband is, you know, when he's working under the sink and fixing, uh, you know, fixing the pipes underneath and, you know, instead of trying to hold a, have have me stand there for 30 minutes holding a flashlight or trying to put the flashlight in your mouth while you work with the uh, tools. I've seen him do that. I said, let's, let's just use this. So I ended up getting it in a manly color so that he wouldn't mind using it. 
Um, these do come in many other different colors and I believe they're right at about $19.99 or, or 20 bucks or something like that. So I think a very good investment. It also comes with a, a way to plug it in and you can recharge it very easily. So the batteries are much, much easier um, to charge just like your other uh, electronics that you have around the house. Okay, somebody else suggested a an empty pill container, which I thought was a great idea um, for putting, you know, little things like uh, yarn needles or, or even sharp things or buttons in them. And you can put them in there, close the top, and and they will be secure. So, so thank you so much um, for, for many of you who sent that idea in. Oh, I wanted to thank um, the neck light idea came from Patriot pirate on on youtube and the pill container idea came from dolores l and a, a similar suggestion was made by many of you and tamara p as well is um instead of a, a pill bottle maybe a small tic tac candy um, container instead of just putting it in a recycle bin or throwing it away you can make use of that so thank you ladies for sending in these ideas okay here is a beautiful idea this is number 15 and I, I saw this one online it was just so let me put it there it was well it's not going to focus there it goes this is a beautiful version of the clover yarn threader can you see okay it's probably not real clear but what this is is you know you may have a hard time getting the yarn and you know the leftover yarn that you have you're, you're threading in and weaving in all your ends and let's say there's just um it's just kind of shredded at one end well this is the solution you stick this into the yarn into the yarn head and then just and then you thread then you put your yarn into that hole and bring it right through it just it helps to thread the yarn in your yarn hook so this again is a fancier one, but it's just very beautiful. It's metal and it's, um, it just has a nice weight to it. This is definitely going in to my hook pack so that I have this wherever I go. All right. And what else do we have? All right. Many of you suggested that I have paper or notebook or a pad and a pencil or something to write with, which Yep, yep, yep. We have always have those around. I just I just didn't mention the obvious, but thank you for reminding me and adding those. And I'm going to add one more thing to this. Um, also on this list for number 16, we're just going to call it our office supplies, um, which would include the, the notebook, paper, pencil, um, a printer. You may need a printer. And um, thank you to Sadalie S and Michelle M for suggesting that. And I'm going to add to this little section, I'm going to say a three hole punch or a single hole punch, um, whatever, especially if you are one to enjoy PDF um, crochet pattern downloads. And this will be just really nice. You can just, you know, poke holes in that computer paper and then just put them right into your notebook and be ready to crochet. All right, number 17 is one of my favorites. I have a set of sound canceling Bose headphones. Yeah, I know it's extravagant, um, but do check for Christmas sales. These sometimes go down in price as much as $100. So these are fantastic. Um, these are great for editing. Um, I use them just about all the time for editing. I use them especially on flights. This has sound canceling you turn it on right here and I can't hear you anymore. I can hear nothing outside of me, but I can hear my music. I can listen to, let's say a book that I have downloaded an audio book. Um, there are so many wonderful things. So if you don't want to watch television and I don't blame you, um, you can, you can listen to stories, you can listen to good music, whatever, and just tune the rest of the world out, especially if you live in a noisy area and the extra sound is bothering you. Um, they also come at, as in-ear um, earbuds. You can use those in place of this. But I did want to make another mention that if you do have something like this, let me show you. 
Um, this again is very easy to charge. You can charge it up electronically. Um, very easy to do. However, if you do travel um, with these on an airline flight, even if you don't plan on using them during your flight, do make sure that you remember that you need to pack these in your carry-on. Don't put them in your checked luggage because with the lithium batteries, they do need to stay in a pressurized area just for everybody's safety. So again, make sure if you travel with these, put them in your carry-on. Don't accidentally slip them into your uh, checked luggage. Number 18 would be yarn bobbins. And these are, again, are some older examples. These are actually hand-me-downs from other people. I have only used them a few times when I have um, done color changing projects. So you may be able to find them online or you could even just use pieces of cardboard, quite honestly, you know, cut to this shape or, or even just in squares and, and just use them just as well. Um, but anyway, yarn bobbins, for those of you who use them, are an excellent thing to add to your yarn basket. And number 19, I'm just gonna show you what I have. This is a generic uh, bottle, small bottle, that is very secure and it has my favorite hand lotion. I wanted to um, thank you, Ms. Dreams, for suggesting non-scented hand lotion. She prefers non-scented. Maybe some of you prefer, you know, the pleasure of a scent, it's whatever. But just having some hand lotion available in your bag is just really, really a great idea, especially on those cooler months when the air tends to dry out, especially if you're up north and, you know, hands can get a little, a little prickly and, and snag some of the more softer yarns. And you want to just, just put some of that on it just to help, help cure that problem. And thanks to Diana G. She recommended that the next time you put on your headphones to enjoy your favorite music as you're crocheting, don't forget a nice tall glass of your favorite iced tea, or in my case, it's gonna be my favorite sugar-free soda. Yum. Ah, yeah, I am ready for some crafting. Well, please tell me if I missed anything again. Don't forget to check out the video, 16 things that you need to crochet. It'll also be in the video description below. And if I still need to do another one, let me know. God bless. Bye-bye.